Hi there everyone, how's it going? In this video, I'm going to show you how to program the equalizer of uh, the CSR8645. And um, yeah, so this has taken me quite a while and I had to jump through quite some, some hoops, but once you do know the tricks, it is quite easy and straightforward. And um, so yeah, first of all, um, you're gonna have to connect uh, to connect your CSR8645 module to a uh, USB SPI converter uh, programmer. And um, yeah, so the best way to do this, if you have multiple boards, is to just tack some wires, uh, short wires, to the uh, programming port. Um, I will uh, I will link in uh, the the previous video I did on this, and that goes a bit more in depth onto uh, in goes in depth about um, how you uh, the pinouts and all the stuff and um, yeah so for this particular um, operation you will want to most likely get a temporary line out of uh, your module so I've done this with this uh, female uh, 3.5 millimeter jack and um, yeah so that is uh, pretty much all on the hardware side and um, yeah so um, I have brought in a speaker nearby. So this actually has a CSR8645 module inside of it, which has not been programmed. So it's the, as it, uh, as it came from China. And uh, the input to the, uh, to the amplifier inside of this is actually paralleled with the, um, so the, the, the onboard CSR chip is actually paralleled with the uh, input jack which is not a very elegant way of doing it, but I've never had problems with it. And so we'll be able to go back and forth uh, and see how whether or not we've actually modified the settings. So uh, let me get the jack from that. And um, yeah, so uh, let me frame this up so you guys can see the module, whether, whether it's blinking or not. Is this in shot? I have no idea. Yeah, it should be. Alright, so I'm going to connect uh, the USB and uh, let's uh, head on over to the computer. And uh, here's where the fun starts. So you actually need a, um, a virtual window. So if you're on Windows 7, I suppose it can work. But if uh, you, like myself, are on Windows 10, uh, you will most likely need... You will most likely... You need a uh, virtual Windows 7 machine, and uh, fortunately nowadays uh, the virtualizers, the, are, I'm not sure they're called like that, anyway, uh, they're very easy to set up and configure and they're free, so that's uh, that's very nice. All you need is, a, is an image of a Windows 7, preferably an old one, so I have, a, I have one from 2009, I believe, on which I've ran no updates, so it's working actually perfectly. So the software I'll demonstrate in this video, I have obviously first tried to, to use it under Windows 10 and there's absolutely no way, no way, like it, it just doesn't work. It works one out of 500 times. So I've got it to work like twice and I've tinkered around like five hours trying to get it to work. So it's, you don't want to go that path. So uh, yeah. I'll uh, also link in uh, link in a video on how to install Windows 7 under under VirtualBox. Um, it doesn't make sense to cover this in this video; It'll just make it too long, and uh, it's beyond the scope of this video, so to say. So I have Windows 7, 32-bit, uh, by the way, mind you. So it helps a lot if it's 32-bit. So some some of the capabilities of the software actually only work. In, uh, in 32 bit mode and uh, so yeah let's uh, boot it up right here and I'll uh, most likely uh, skip through all of this and yeah so what you want to basically do is um, install these through two programs I'll uh, link them in the description and so let's go over the installation right quick even though I do have them installed so but I'm pretty sure it's straightforward so this you can leave unattended 
most likely don't wanna, I already have a shortcut. This is actually ticked somehow, so yeah. All right, so this and the blue suit installer is also very straightforward. And you wanna basically leave everything as it is, so yeah, I guess. And you wanna set this to, uh, to be ticked and set debug to USB SPI since we are using the, the USB to SPI adapter. And install. And I hope this will still work with uh, my overwriting of the stuff. So you will have to restart the computer. So I'll do this right quick. All right, so now that we're back in, in Windows, um, you will want to connect the USB to, to SPI adapter. Right, so plug it in, and you'll hear the Windows 10 chime. So that's all fine and good. It means Windows 10 sees it, right? But we actually want it to be seen by the Windows 7 instance we have running over here. So right-click the fourth icon, which is supposed to look like a USB, and connect and click the the SPI connector. And now you might have heard that it did make the chime under Windows um, 7. And if you do this before installing the programs, it's going to give an error. If you do it after installing the two programs, it'll be fine and it should work out of the box. All right, so um, now that we're here, um, how should we approach this? So first of all, you're supposed to do a dump of the uh, to back up the settings of your device. So in case you fuck something up, uh, you'll have uh, something to go back to. So select a dump, and I'm gonna do it on my desktop, which is apparently gone. All right, now it's here. So just save your dump, right? And this shouldn't take too long, although it does take a while. All right, so it's all fine. So now you have basically the prototype setting, the prototypical setting, so unmodified ones. So unfortunately uh, this in my case is not the the untouched version because I did tinker around quite a bit with this before the video. So give me half a second I'll uh, download the, the original ones from my previous video on this. Which I invite you to take a look at. So uh, renaming CSR 8645. Alright so don't want to hear my voice. Uh, my settings dump, all right. So this has the uh, default settings, only the name has changed. And uh, open, so do I have it or what? All right, so I do have it. Ah yeah, crap, it is in my Dropbox and I have Dropbox installed, yeah, true, all right. So I'll copy this over to the desktop, pressing control. And but pretty cool that it does know that. Um, and yeah, so this would be the dump that you would be getting from uh, from your uh, from your module if it had been untu untouched. So uh, now you can exit out of this and go to the universal front end. So another trick for um, it's not a trick for young players. It's just a weird trick, right? So. If you, if you attempt to connect to the DSP, right, it's not going to work. So it's going to say that the algorithm isn't, or some stuff, yeah, not, not a recognizable algorithm. So the trick to this is to actually get some music going, right? So I'll, um, should I do this in frame? Nah, you guys know how to connect to a module. So I'll connect to it right quick. So anyway, let's get some music going. All right, so it doesn't have to be loud or anything, especially given how YouTube uh, favors uh, copyrighted music being played on videos. And so now the music is playing, you wanna click UDSP and connect, and it works instantaneously. So in my case at least, right? On Windows 10, this would take forever, and it would basically never work. And so yeah, now that we're here, uh, perhaps you might want to uh, select a download from um, download from device, and you never want to compare. You don't really care. 
And so this is what's on my device and most likely this is uh, what's going to be on your device. So the decoder is set like that, the equalizer is flat and bypassed so there's no way it's going to work. And so the first thing you want to do is um, maybe play around with the settings. So you can do this by, sorry, you can do this by checking the live view. And um, so in here you can actually click the, the equalizer and uh, deselect bypass and deselect flat. So these two have to be unchecked. And uh, I don't know, let's, um, let's make something ludicrous out of it over here so we could definitely hear the difference. So I'll turn up the volume a little bit. All right, so you did hear that it did change sound, change its correct uh, characteristics. And again, All right, so this allows you to easily experiment with um, with your settings and uh, figure out what exactly you want to do. And so once you've done figuring out what the exact uh, parameters are, perhaps take a picture of it, that's what I did, or a screenshot or something. And then you want to go back in here. So this is the static mode. This is kind of what the settings are right at the moment. And you can change them live, so to say. So you want to go to decoder and you want to check all of these. So I don't know how they got checked just now, but you have to check all of them. So enable the equalizer on all of these. I didn't check uh, what those do, so I don't know. If you want to play around, go ahead. And so make sure that's checked and then go over here and also check all of these that you want to actually modify. So and make sure flat is disabled. So you might have some waveform over here, some stuff some uh, setting and then you have flat enabled and it's still not going to work so I, I don't know make sure that that doesn't happen so and you can see the settings jump around a lot so make sure like double check your your stuff so first when you're going to enable these all are going to be on h so that's going to be be looking insanely weird right so when you're going to start off it's going to look like this and um there are some presets so like bass boost or something but I would would recommend you guys going uh, going all in and uh, setting it up to your liking. So basically, you want to always more or less use the P. And uh, yeah, you could just pull them up and down and make your own wave. Uh, do watch out. This is um, I believe this is a linear scale, so you might want to go logarithm and uh, do your work here in the lows, right? Because this is quite important. So what I've done is. Um, beefed up the the, the lows uh, up to 100 uh, hertz and uh, dampened the mids a bit because uh, the speaker doesn't have any tweeters as you can see so i don't want those to go too too much uh, into the final final sound and also i've uh, amplified the highs quite a bit actually so again given that they don't have any uh, any tweeters this does uh, does really make a difference so for the purpose of this video, I'm not going to use this because this is barely different from, from the stock setting, right? So it's, we're not doing anything drastic. So I've actually made a fucked up setting, which looks like this and sounds insanely weird. So maybe drop it even further like this. All right, so I'll click OK. And again, make sure that everything is checked. So everything is checked. Make sure this looks how you want it to look. And now you want to go to the save button or save PSR. So this saves the PSR in a TXT file, you don't really need that. And it's gonna always bitch about the PC and DSP parameters not matching. I've never seen them match, so I do not wanna compare them. And we wanna save this to our desktop parameters, uh, fucked up. All right, so we've saved those. And we can get out of this. So you can actually click upload to device, but in my case, at least it didn't work. So you feel free to try it on yours. And so anyway, we have the, um, the two keys that modify the equalizer. So this is, uh, this is the settings for the equalizer. So which ones are enabled, I believe. And this is the actual equalizer setting. So it's quite long of a string. All right, so basically you want to copy this. 
and simply paste it at the beginning of the uh, at the beginning of the uh, full full configuration done. So um, yeah, make sure that you've copied everything because if this doesn't fit on your so this happened to me a couple of times and I also wasted some time like this. So if this is like this, then you won't actually copy all of it. So I don't know. I am quite stupid, so it might never have happened to you guys. But yeah, I don't know. Watch out. And so yeah, make sure all of this looks fine. Make sure it does say equals CVC configuration. So if if something didn't work, it's not gonna say this and it's not gonna work. And so yeah, that being said, you can hit Control S to save it and maybe even save it manually. And now all that we need to do is basically upload it to the um, upload it to the board. So we're gonna go to File, Merge, and select the uh, the full configuration. So it's writing it to the chip, and we're not gonna notice any change while this is happening. But once we do restart, we should be able to see quite a significant difference. So that was pretty much all of it. So now let's get back to the um, to the module on full frame. And um, yeah, so I'm now connected to the module called Dari, and this is inside the speaker. All right, so that's also enabled at the moment. And so now we're gonna restart the, the Daria module, so the outside one. Let me get that in shot a little bit. And so plug it back in. I'll remove it from the save devices because it's not gonna work. And uh, yeah, wait for it to be discovered. All right, so now we should be able to hear the difference. All the kids should cover their eyes at the moment. So. So I believe that definitively have a, definitively proves that we did change the equalizer and um, yeah. Other things to say, um, I don't know. So I think once you get the Windows 7 uh, rolling, it should be pretty smooth sailing. So the main issues were getting it to work on uh, Windows 10, which we've completely circumvented and it can be done, I would say. Uh, finding the software, which has been a pain in the ass, but I did find it, and I'll link it down below for you guys. And uh, yeah, so yeah, feel free to hit me down in the comments if you have any questions. And uh, yeah, have a good one.